Sunday, July 26th, day 68, I believe. Uh, so, I got a bit of a late start this morning. More or less just starting hiking now, and it's already like 12 or something. Um, today's probably going to be a fairly easy day. Only like 15 miles or something. Yeah, it's partly because, you know, late start and... Partly because my leg is still acting up a little bit. But it's largely because that's the edge of like, I don't know, maybe it's like Lassen National Park or something. And you need bear canisters if you're gonna camp in that park. Uh, the PCT does a, only a 20 mile stretch in that park. So if you camp just before the park, then you can probably do the entire park in one day and thus not have to carry a bear canister. At least, that's our plan. Unfortunately, it seems like, I don't know, like 15 people or something were at the halfway point the day before we were, according to the logs. And it looks like several of them took a zero in Chester or one of those towns nearby because we just saw like five or six people who are just ahead of us. So, if all of them have the same plan of, you know, camp right outside the park so you don't need the bear canister, then we might be in for a bit of a crowded night tonight. It's Sunday, July 26th, and we're having our first bit of storm on the trail. Started out with some rain, now we've got some hail. Dakota's running towards a thicket of trees down there. Uh, I'm kind of sheltered here, but might have to go join him. The hail's not particularly painful yet. And I think it's gonna just be a short storm. I would say those are maybe like pea-sized pieces of hail. So yeah, nothing too terrible. Uh, we are approaching what it's called Terminal Geyser. I don't think it's an actually a geyser, it's just... I guess steam escaping or something, but yeah, they call it a geyser and it looks, so far it's looking pretty cool. <laughs> huh, I wonder if that water's any hot. I mean, if we go find out. Oh yeah, that is definitely warm water. Yeah, pretty cool. And the water in the river is warm. Yeah, it's steaming. It's kind of crazy that unlike in Yellowstone, there's nothing preventing us from doing this. Just a sign saying, pay attention. Well, we camped yesterday. Oh, yeah, last night was probably our most crowded camp. I mean, most people are still quite a ways away from us. We were on one side of a stream and they were on the other, so yeah, we didn't really bother each other much, but there's probably the most PCD hikers camping in as small of an area as we've yet seen on trail. Uh, today we got to see some geyser thing already. Uh, as I said, we're going to hike a minimum of 20 miles, and then after that, yeah, I don't know how far we'll go. We might stop near 20, we might go on for like 25, or if you hike about 30 miles apparently, 
you end up at like a restaurant gas station place, which is very hiker friendly. So that might be an option, but again, it sounded like some of the other hikers we met were planning on doing that. So that may or may not be crowded as well. <sighs> Going uphill takes a lot of breath. Uh, another reason why going 30 might be somewhat advantageous is that puts us right at the beginning of a 30 mile dry stretch. So, again, if you did two 30s, you could get through the bear canister area and then get through the dry stretch, but I don't know. I've never actually even done one 30, so I don't know if I want to do back to back 30s. This is like Boiling Springs Lake or something. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get closer, but yeah, just looks a bit different. It's Monday, July 27th, and we're hiking through Lassen Volcano National Park today. I have switched backpacks for this section. Uh, I've switched back to one of my Osprey packs. I originally started this hike with the Gossamer Gear Mariposa, and it's a 60 liter bag. Uh, I think it weighs just under two pounds. I was gonna look it up, but we haven't had cell service for a while. Uh, this Osprey backpack probably weighs around four pounds and holds only 45 liters. So I've gone to a smaller, heavier bag. Um, I bought the Gossamer gear because I didn't know if this one would be able to hold all my stuff and I wanted to cut the weight. I really liked the other bag and that's why I stuck with it for a whole half of the trail and I still don't know for sure if I'm gonna stay switched to this one, but I probably will. I switched a wit to it away from it to this one because it kept giving me persistent shoulder and back pain. It wasn't non-stop, but it did give me rash or rub marks on my shoulders, which I've had to some degree since the beginning. And on and off, it's been giving me quite a bit of back pain. Uh, it did seem to get worse as the trip went on. So it could partially be because the bag's not a proper fit. Uh, the longer I've hiked, the more I've had to tighten the waist belt, and now it's almost at its max. And it just felt like the waist belt wasn't taking any of the weight from the bag. So, uh, I couldn't get the weight off my shoulders. Uh, I also switched out the pad that came with it. Um, the Gossamer Gear has a pad on the outside that you can take in and out of the bag. I switched it from the original one to a section of a Z light hyperlight, hyperlight, something like that, because I wanted a bigger pad that my dog could sleep on at night. Uh, at first it was comfortable, but the pad wasn't a perfect fit. So after the desert, I removed the pad and that helped with the back pain for a while, but then it came back um, and I was using it without a pad. So it could have been that it had no pad in the back. Could have been uh, that the waist belt wasn't a good fit but the pain was getting persistent, so I decided to switch. Uh, what I did really like about it was its organization. It had a lot of outside pockets, uh, so I could quickly get what I needed, and I always knew where my stuff was. Like, um, it has outside water package pouches where you can get your water bottle. In this bag, I do have a smart water bottle back there, but there's no way I can reach it while hiking. The only way to access that water bottle is to stop and take my bag off. With my Mariposa, I could grab the water bottle and put it back without ever, with, while walking, I didn't even have to stop, let alone remove my bag. I was also able to reach my bear spray, which I, now I've got it on this other side in a mesh bag. But again, even though it's right there in a mesh pouch, I would have to take my bag off in order to grab it. Um, my tent was also stored on the outside on the Mariposa. So when I got to camp, I could just pull out my tent and set it up and I wouldn't have to open my bag or take anything out of my bag. And that was really convenient. There is no pouch big enough on the Osprey to store the tent on the outside. Right now I have it in the bottom 
but I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep it there. So it's probably gonna have to go in the main pouch. Um, so, so far this bag has been more comfortable. I can tell that the hip belt is working a lot more and taking the weight off my shoulders. So even though overall it's heavier, I have, haven't had as much pain. So I'll take it at least for a couple sections and see how I like it. It has slowed down a little bit with my packing and unpacking and feels, it's a bit more of a pain to get everything to fit while in my other one, everything fit easily because it was 15 liters bigger. And once again, we have an evening rainstorm. Yeah, both today and yesterday it rained in the evening, which means it's rained as much in the past two days as it has in the 67 previous days. So yeah, I hope that's not a sign of things to come. I'm hoping these storms quickly fade out and don't come back. Tuesday, July 28th, day 70. We're hiking along and we have this big hall. Yeah, I don't think we have time to go down and check it out, but there's one there and then there's one over there. Uh, this gas station, I think it's called like Old Station or something, was like 0.2 miles off trail, so me and Jerrica decided to come here for an early improvised lunch. Our ice cream is over there thawing because it was really frozen. Yeah, uh, this is also, uh, cars are really loud. This is also where all those other hikers we kept meeting on the trail were going. Apparently you're allowed to camp back there and looks like they're just beginning to break camp for the morning. We are at, I guess they call them Subway Caves. It's kind of just, I guess, a walk through cave. Yeah, we're gonna go check it out. Tuesday, July 28th, I believe. These are the caves, but there's probably too many people to really record in them. Uh, so the caves are quite cool. Um, yeah, I understand now why they call them Subway Cave, because, I don't know, it really did look like a subway. I mean, there's like a big, arching, and a half circle tunnel. Yeah, quite right. I mean, it almost looked man-made, or at least man-modified, but I don't think it was. I think that's just the way it formed. But, I mean, yeah, some of the walls are, like, really smooth, and it's, like, a really good doming tunnel. I don't know. You know, parts of it got a little lower of a roof, or a little less, I guess, symmetrical. But all in all, it was, yeah, very much like a subway tunnel. The floor was a bit rough, but other than that, yeah. It was pretty cool, definitely worth the uh, 20 or so minutes or whatever it takes to go walk through it. Yeah, definitely a good side trip. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, yesterday we walked, I believe, 23.6 miles to our camp, which was, yeah, that was our original plan. We had considered going maybe a little farther, but then we'd have to dry camp or we could have tried to go the whole 30 like some of those other people did and camp by that gas station, but I don't know, as you, it seemed like the gas station was kind of crowded with PCT hikers already, so there's no real need to do that. And since it was so close to the trail, it wasn't much of a bother really to, you know, stop off in the morning to grab a quick breakfast or an early lunch or something. Uh, today, I think we plan to go around 25 miles. Uh, we're in a bit of a dry section right now, so I think we just got filled up at our last water source and we hope to go about 16 more miles before we encounter water again. I guess there is technically a water source in between here and there, like eight miles or something, but apparently it's down a quite steep slope. So this is only like a quarter of a mile, but you lose like five or 800 feet or something and they say it can take like eight minutes to go down and 12 minutes to come up or something, so sounds like a bit of a bother, so we're hoping we can skip that water source. Uh, yep, I think that's pretty much all. That's the plan. 25 miles a day. I think we have 
I don't know, like 16 to 18 more miles to go. And about 16 miles of that is going to be no water. So the PCT comes out right there, walks along here, and there's a parking lot here, and we actually unexpectedly met our support vehicles here. Now, we didn't tell them to meet us here, they didn't know the PCT was here, they just stopped here to enjoy the overlook that's right over there, and we just happened to come by at the same time. So, yep, unexpected meet up with the support vehicles.